What could Uber do better? So I've been driving in Sacramento on the weekends and Uber is definitely giving me the most rides. So I've been primarily driving for Uber, working to get their bonuses and not driving so much for Lyft. As a result, um, I've had some frustrations. Um, so while Uber has been great about, you know, the, the demand for rides, um, I've come up with six um, ideas I have for Uber to uh, make me <laughs> a happier uh, driver. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you those six ways. And stick around uh, to the end, and I'm gonna share with you the number one gripe that I have uh, about Uber here in the Sacramento market. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Nice little Nespresso to get us started. So I've been, <clears throat> I've been driving for Uber and uh, I got a few little gripes, uh, things that I think that they could do to improve uh, the experience uh, for me. Um, now, they're not going to agree with anything that I'm going to say, but <laughs> let's get into it. Number one, let me get out of the queue at the airport and start accepting rides right away. So what happens is you go to the airport in Sacramento and they want to put you into a queue and you can then either drive to you know the waiting area or just leave right so what i do is i just leave because when i go to the queue i wait for 10 15 20 minutes it's not worth my time better that i get out but why can't you make it so that i can just accept new rides getting out of the airport from places out other than the airport what you're looking at here is what happened this morning. Um, I got to the airport at 4.59, right? And then all this time I could be accepting my next ride from somebody who's close to the airport, but not actually, you know, landed in the airport. And then um, at 5.03, I start heading out of the zone, right? And you can see that kind of blue zone there, that's the airport. And not till 5.06 am I out of the zone. And it's only at that point that I can start accepting rides. So that's like seven minutes, Se seven minutes of dead time, right? When I could be uh, getting getting my next ride and I just hate inefficiency. So that's my first uh, suggestion. Number two, stop reducing the bonuses every single week, all right? So when I started, I was offered like $175 on the weekend, you know, for doing like 40 rides. And every week it's come down like $10, $10, $10 to, I think last weekend it was like $70. And this week it's gonna be like $60. So obviously they have an algorithm and the algorithm is saying, hey, here's a guy who drives every weekend. And as we're lowering the bonus, he keeps driving. So we're gonna keep lowering the bonuses until he stops driving, <laughs> you know? So um, stop doing that. Um, can't you just set a bonus and say, this is a fair bonus for people that work on the weekends and do this many rides? Um, and I know every rider, every driver gets a different um, set of bonuses. Um, I would just like a level playing field. Is that too much to ask Uber? A level playing field for all the drivers? Number three, let me uh, deactivate from San Francisco and reactivate in Sacramento without having to deactivate me for a week, right? So look, so I was a San Francisco driver for four years. I stopped for two years because of the pandemic. And then I came back and I signed up in Sacramento at the Uber Hub and the Lyft Hub. And I gave a Sacramento address because that's where I'm living right now. Lyft put me in the Sacramento market. Uber put me into the San Francisco market. So all the bonuses that I'm seeing, like this one right here, right, you can see is for uh, San Francisco and the East Bay. And that's what all I'm getting, all the bonuses I'm getting. I'm not getting any Sacramento bonuses. So Uber is saving a lot of money on me because I could be getting all these extra bonuses added to my paycheck, but they won't give them to me because they, they assign me to San Francisco, even though I live in, in Sacramento. So I said, hey, can you switch me? And here's what they said. They said, um, in order to change the city, you'll need to complete a new background check and may need to upload documents again. This could take three to five business days and you won't be able to accept trips or deliveries during that time. 
Can you confirm that you still want to switch cities? Once you confirm, we'll get things started. Doesn't it seem like a high tech company like Uber should be able to pull me up on a screen and just make that switch? Um, so I'm wondering, why are they doing that? Well, is it to dissuade people from switching markets? Is that what they're trying to do to make it like just a pain? I, it, if, uh, I don't understand, I don't understand. Or is, or is it that they want to save on the bonus money? I don't get it, I don't get it. Number four, <laughs> stop telling me that I'm in a busy area and to expect rides soon. You know, when I first started seeing that, I thought, oh yay, I'm just gonna park my car and wait. And I waited and I waited and I waited. And then I noticed that anytime that notification came up, I, it was a long time before I got another ride. So I think they show you that so that you'll stay where you are because it's an underserved area. I think it's the opposite of being busy. So what I do when I see that notification now, I leave that area and I get rides much faster. So there's no need to tell me that I'm in a busy area. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't seem to be true. Number five, and this is by far my biggest gripe. Oh, and it frustrates me every single day that I drive. Can you add auto accept on future rides? So with Lyft, you know, I'm driving, I've got a passenger in my car and I'm dry, focusing on my driving and I'm looking at my ways and I just hear this little sound. It says like a ride added to queue. And I know I have another ride waiting for me um, once I drop this person off. Well, with Uber, I've got to be driving my car, talking to the passenger, looking at the thing, and then um, I hear a, a little sound, and it's a subtle sound. It's not like a big, loud sound. And it's telling me that there's a ride that I could look at and accept. So then, I gotta change, you know, focus on my little phone quickly because they only give me a few seconds. So what you see here is uh, in the first screenshot, you know, up there in red, that's the notification, black on black. It doesn't really stand out. Of course, when I get the notification, there isn't a red thing around it. So it's just like that. So it's mostly the sound. Then I hear the sound. I gotta click on that thing. That takes me to a second screen. And as you can see, by the time I got to this one, uh, there's just like a millisecond left. And I've got to look at that and decide, is that a ride that I want or not? And what usually happens is I can't do it fast enough, so I just accept. I just accept it. And then when I finish with the, the current passenger, I look at it and decide if I want to accept it or not or, or cancel, right? So why can't you just do what Lyft does? I, I don't understand why you may, it's, it's, there's also a safety issue here in that uh, I gotta, you know, go to, go to focusing quickly here, not on the road, not on the passenger. Um, whereas with Lyft, it just happens seamlessly in the background. And I can tell you, it's a much more relaxing uh, drive when I, when I am doing Lyft. Uh, and finally, number six is don't base the Uber Pro qualification on cancellation rate <laughs> when <laughs> you're making me auto, you're making me accept rides uh, so quickly. Um, it seems like you're punishing me for accepting rides that I don't have time to evaluate. And then when I do get to evaluate them and they're more than 15 minutes away and I say, no, I'm not gonna drive 15 minutes for a, a, you know, a five minute ride, um, then my cancellation rate goes up. And, and in order to, to get the Uber Pro, um, you need to have a 4% cancellation rate. As you can see here, my cancellation rate at this time is 6%, um, which is close, but not close enough. So if you're not gonna give us auto accept, um, then how, how, can you, how can you base this whole program on the cancellation rate being 4% or less? Um, doesn't seem fair to the drivers. So what are the key takeaways here? Uber, God bless you. you. You give me a lot of rides and for that I'm very grateful. So this is in the nitpicking uh, category of things, but I've listed six things that um, constantly kind of frustrate me throughout the day in dealing with your, your app. The number one frustration is how I have to jump uh, in order to try and evaluate the ride that you offer me next 
um, while I'm while I'm driving with a passenger. It's it's I think it's a safety issue, <clears throat> and it's also um, causing my cancellation rate to be higher. Um, of course, I'm going to try and accept everything that I can because I don't want to miss out on a ride, right? So take them or leave them. Those are some suggestions I have. And uh, if you've got some other ideas, uh, go ahead and put them down in the comments of ways that Uber could improve their app. And maybe someone from Uber will see it and we can get some, some changes made. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you have not subscribed yet to this YouTube channel, you want to become a better driver, you want to make more money as a driver, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, Y'all go out and have a great day. Uh, be safe out there. This is Jay Crater saying see you next time. Bye-bye.